Hello, Gorringes are on view, this time for our sale on the 4th of December. Christmas is approaching worryingly swiftly. Uh, so, good chance to uh, consider what you might find in Gorringes. It can make good presents or a present for yourself or what have you. Um, so, let's have a little browse around and see what we've got. Um, it's a toy sale and we'll pick on some of those toys in due course. But various things catch my eye, such as this, lot 455. What's unusual about that? The Sunderland Luster Jug. We see plenty of those, often with a ship, though that one's slightly different, and very often with a view of the Iron Bridge, but not so often with a, uh, an inscription for someone in Guernsey. Dated 1836, there we go. Thomas Fowler, Marie Le Patournel. Um, there we go. Uh, so that's, that's a sort of unique item. It's got a slightly domed foot in the casting, which means that it, it, it spins around rather conveniently. Um, but then, most unusual, number of other items from Guernsey in this sale. Watch out for the additional import duty you pay on the hammer price. If it's over 100 years old, you pay 5% extra. If it's under 100 years old, you pay 20% on top. So that's, that's money that needs thinking about, isn't it? So, dragging backwards, back to Christmas, 456. There's a nice old bottle of Bass Armagnac, Berry Brothers. Uh, with it, you get a 1970s Berry Zone. Uh, vintage port, so there's a perfect 456, perfect Christmas thing. Uh, 728 catches my eye. So it's the sort of relatively naive oil on panel. The panel has some age. Um, it's perhaps not as old as the work it's, as what it's depicting, but it's, it's of age. And we've got an American warship in battle with an English one. So I imagine uh, one could speculate and potentially work out which ships they're supposed to be. Um, it's got some aging to it. Some of it looks like natural aging. Some of it looks like perhaps artificial aging, but still lot 728, quite a decorative thing. Napoleon's in the cinema, so I'm told. Uh, big at the box office, and he's also here, lot 460. You get um, a reasonably pleased with himself looking Napoleon with the eagles on the base in bronze, bit of ormolu. Alongside, um, you get a uh, sort of after the antique classical figure. He was once holding something, so uh, he's, he's lost his spear or, or triton or whatever it might be. But there we go, that's lot 460. Some nice quality English. Do I say English? Probably not English. No, Sitzendorf porcelain model soldiers. Uh, this one is Kingsman Collector Coldstream Guard, not 462, very finely done. And with it, you get Grenadier Guards as well. There we go, two in the lot there, 462, something a bit different. We try to sort of not do the same things every time, it's not always possible. Ian Houston, rather nice hand. Um, there's a good size Houston there, lot 745 obviously view of Venice, um, for something different, 7.65. There we go, this is called uh, None Such by Sue McPherson, BA it says on the back. It's a work on canvas, bit of fun. Uh, I think there's one or two other works by her in the sale. I drift round huge quantities of things that people haven't collected. If you've bought from us, we'd really appreciate it if you would come and pick them up, because they all sort of clutter the place up, it comes rather awkward. Back to pictures. Uh, something traditional, lot 712, there's an Oliver Clare. The Clare family, there were, there were other Clares about, George as well, and, and uh, another from memory, but um, this is Oliver, perhaps the most well-known, typical oil still life, usually a bird's nest, flowers, sometimes fruit. Um, in nice condition, you can safely say. Next to it, 7-Eleven, another Ian Houston. This is um, Omfleur, the quayside. Uh, some nice old labels on the back, various uh, dealers labels and the likes. Duncan Miller Fine Arts. Uh, perhaps needs a clean, but really otherwise no faults noted. Sitting in front of it, one of these nice little Foley clocks. Look, 396. Wake up and get to business is the inscription. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun, isn't it? Got the original movement, Foley and Tarsio. Nice. There we see it. There's a bigger version in the fine cell that will come up in due course. Uh, carrying on down, another Oliver Clare. It's sort of pretty much the pair to the other one in a way. The frame is very similar. It's got a few faults to it. But uh, there's Oliver painting fruit, lot 709. Uh, in front of that, this catches my eye, 392. 
Uh, typically regarded as Scandinavian, uh, these sort of peg tankards. 392, there's the pegging going through, holding the uh, handle on. Um, and this main body looks to be made perhaps from a single piece of wood. Certainly the, uh, the barrel of it is. So uh, of some age that, of some age in character, 392, often sort of thing that goes on and makes a bit more these days. Um, I carry on down, still looking at sort of near contemporary art. 705 catches my eye. This is um, Robert King, Royal Society of Marine Artists. It's called Setting Sun at Plan Mont, uh, 1986. Nicely done again, pretty good condition. Alongside that, Charles Perron. Mr. Perron was quite busy. He painted lots of still lifes. This one is called Pom Pom. Beautifully done. Uh, that's lot 704. When he wasn't painting still lifes, the flowers and eggs and things, he was painting doorways to cottages. He did quite a lot of those as well. Uh, again, nice, original, untouched condition. Original frame, maybe needs a clean, but pretty good. Lot 703. So. I think we're saying there's quite a few pictures in the cell that are of, uh, of some appeal. Um, there's also a number of maps in the cell as well. If you sort of drift through the catalogue, you'll see uh, ass assorted maps, including maps of sort of Tartary and so that part of the world, um, which are a little bit different from the norm. Round here, well, it's, it's toys, as we mentioned, and um, there's a big, long run of Steiff collector's toys. Um, all relating to Beatrix Potter. So it looks like a lot of these are on their own. So there's sort of Timmy Willy there. Um, the amiable guinea pig. So some of the more obscure characters, as well as Jemima Puddle Duck and there's Jeremy Fisher and what have you. So those are all round about lot 300 onwards. Um, and quite a number of them are running the whole length. Also got dolls. Uh, over on this side, a, a various assorted box lots really of um, some tin plate, some die cast, classic dinky and corgi and then more sort of later things going into scale electrics and the like. Uh, lovely uh, in here, this is lot 281. It's a modernish box because it's a sort of historical recreation but there's a rather splendid Alfa Romeo there. Now you do find the original ones from period date, and they make sort of three to five thousand depending on colour and condition. This one is obviously not a period one, but it, it'll still run clockwork. It is a numbered edition, and that's in at two to three hundred pounds with its instructions and original box. Perfect big boys toy Christmas present. So there we go, all sorts of interesting smalls. Do have a look at the furniture. The warehouse is currently out of bounds for me at the moment, so I'm not in the warehouse today, but do have a good look through. Various carpets, rugs, etc. Still a bit of garden furniture coming through this one. I think you'll see some rather nice staddle stones that will come up. Um, they're, they're coming in the building as I speak, I believe, but those are rather good. So uh, keep your eye out for those. Come round behind the counter with me. So, silver, a, an array of silver. Look at this, we've got nine shelves all full of, of glittery silver, all sorts of things, as you can see, um, ranging from lovely, big, heavy, sort of George the First shape teapots. That's, that's a more recent one, it looks George the Sixth to me, and it's in with a George the Third one for some reason that's got no handle, because probably the handle was ivory and therefore it can't be sold, so the, the handles get removed and one can get a wooden one made up, I suppose. Um, so yeah, a mixture of silver. I've picked out a few things for you. Lot 840. Uh, there we are. Victorian. That shield shape is London Victorian, latish Victorian. But a really nice tankard here. Tankard because it's got a lid. It's a lidded mug. It's very much in the sort of 17th century style. Got a great big um, Our Trust in God um, armorial engraved onto it. Um, just a really nice thing. Um, William Barnard and Sons, respectable maker, nice gauge to it. So yeah, good thing that, lot 840. Next to it, these are always a bit of a sort of classic, lot 870. This is an inkwell, sits on the desk. There's your inkwell. Uh, pen rests to the side, but then what makes it a bit better is having this sort of eight day timepiece set into the lid. So we see lots of these um, capstan inkwells, they're called, of various sizes, but this one is just a bit superior. Uh, dating from 
round about 1900, 1910, that sort of date. Roger will have dated it. Um, there was an article recently in the uh, Antiques Trade Gazette about silver mustard pots and a man who'd collected over a hundred of them. And uh, I guess that's what it's all about, this antiques bug, isn't it? Is you, you see one pot and you think, oh, I quite like that mustard pot and it's got quite a nice shape to it. And uh, what is it? Let's have a look. It's, um, this one's George III, but it's getting late. It's probably getting near 1820 in date. There's the marks there in London. Um, but it's a nice shape. It's nice that it sort of runs across the hand. It's got a blue glass liner. Um, and so you might buy that for, I don't know, sort of £150 or so. And then the next thing you know, you've seen another one. You think, well, actually, I don't have that shape. I, I quite like that. And that one is um, looks like George III again. Quick look at the marks. Um, so, uh, yes, I, perhaps I'll start collecting mustard pots. And before you know it, you have 100 of them. I mean, he had... Punch and Judy and all sorts of novelties that are worth thousands. So um, had a really good mixture. Um, but uh, there we go. The seeds of a collection are, are, are in all sorts of interesting places and a relatively affordable hobby. Uh, a less affordable hobby, perhaps, is motorbikes, mm -hmm. classic motorbikes. This is a silver, no less, model of uh, Harley Davidson motorbike, lot 900. Quite a thing, isn't it? It's got rubber tyres stamped with the sort of Firestone branding on them but there we go look at that that's for the for the biking enthusiast lot 900 and last but not least one of these um, Irish silver dish rings lot 899 um, hallmarks for Dublin Western Sun the retailer they did a lot of these and I think these dish rings are generally thought to be for potatoes um, you'd have a, a cloth liner and they have hot baked potatoes within them and it's in the Georgian style but it's later in date than that so there we go nice lot of silver to consider quick peek at the jewelry so in the jewelry nice mixture again good mixture looks like oh nearly 100 lots 85 lots good selection and what are we going to pick out for you this time enamel I thought we'd start with 903 look at that um this is Chinese enamel with uh jade a little bit of cracking running through that one. Um, it's a sort of butterfly caterpillar themed, almost like chicadas, um, on a sort of silver gilt. I think that says, um, it says China on there, as well as a sort of maker's name. Probably puts it to around about 1910 to 20, that sort of date. A little bit of bruising and lossing, commensurate with age and use, as we like to say. Uh, while we're on enamel, 942, there's a pretty little pendant watch. Look at that, can we get that? Um, lovely um, baton and pearl, seed pearl link chain, mm. diamonds set there, rose diamonds to that loop. And then here's the watch itself. It's got a bit of discoloration. It's had a few knocks and chips. It's probably been sort of swung around by a mm -hmm. flapper in her, in her heyday. Um, but uh, great fun. More diamonds around the suspension loop. Um, there's the dial underneath. Uh, Roger will have had a look to see if it's going. I, I would suspect that it might not be in this condition, but you never know. So 9.42. Next to it, a rather charming ring uh, in a little old box from Sheffield. Uh, 9.33. Look at that. That's It's quite a dinky. Hold it still just a sec. I can oh, focus. hold it still. That makes sense. Yeah. How about that? I think that's better. That's quite you. a dinky little ring. It had a very little finger. I suppose it could be enlarged, he said. Um, but yes, set with pearls, uh, sort of Belle Epoque. That pearl's a little bit wobbly and might well be improved by having a replacement. But little diamond in the middle. So there we go, pretty sort of Belle Epoque dress ring. Next to it, 937, a very delicate, sort of almost cantile work um, gold bracelet showing there. And back to enamel, 944, sweet little horse racing hunting or horse racing hunting i guess in that outfit would you say well, i think he's racing you know about horses he's, he's racing yeah he has got a cap that's yeah. right okay well, he's, I, racing. I, yeah, he's racing um yeah sweet little thing uh got some oh my eyes a few it's got marks underneath it roger will have deciphered them um cute little thing in a little box there uh, nice. uh very nice that's lot 944 last but not least how about a rather smart omega uh from geneva a wristwatch um, gold cased, nice black dial, pretty much the sort of patty pan dial where they've got these faceted panels around the edges. Uh, I'm not quite sure it's fully patty pan, but it's, it's heading that way. Um, but it does have an issue. Is it going? No, it's not. And it hasn't got a winder. Uh, it has got its original Omega buckle, which is nice. 
um, which is gold plated and has worn through, but uh, it's going to need some attention. So 958, uh, a restoration project. Other watches are in the cell. I've seen a little gold Rolex in there and various other bits and pieces. So as always, come along and have a look. The sales seem to be getting bigger at the moment. We're sort of that sausage factory is someone's cranked up the lever and there's more and more coming in and you've got toys for this one, toys, dolls. There's a nice big dolls house in there, actually, Victorian one. And then the week after that, you've got Lux and the fine sale. And the week after that, you've got books, books, a really good lot of books Philip's put together. That's so the um, last of the speciality until... Well, year. that's the that takes us to the eighteenth of uh, December. We, we even we might stop for a <laughs> glass of port. <laughs> so um, yes, come and see us while you can before Christmas comes, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much.